Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to walk you through the difference between building um, counters with D flip-flops versus JK flip-flops. So it's the 74LS74N in this case versus the 74LS76N, which is the JK. So these are both considered small-scale integration and a quick note about that, this is vocabulary that we want to understand. When we build at the beginning of our class here, we're going to build using individual flip-flops. We're going to see the flip-flops. We're going to wire up each flip-flop individually. That is called small-scale integration. You'll see it referred to as SSI in our curriculum. However, later on in this unit, we will build using medium-scale integration, MSI. And what that is, is that later on we'll have chips like the 74LS163, for instance. And those chips house many flip-flops on one chip. And so rather than seeing each flip-flop individually, you'll just understand, hey, I've got a chip here, and it has like four flip-flops on the inside of it. And that's called medium-scale integration. So note the difference between the two, and please just don't get confused. For now, we're just working on flip-flops, okay? The main idea for building counters with small-scale integration is you're basically going to chain together a series of divide by two circuits. And so what does that look like? If we can make a divide by two circuit with either a D flip-flop or a JK flip-flop, that means we can also um, create counters with these. So with the D flip-flops, and I know I covered this in the previous video since this is the second in the series that I've created, the key characteristic with D flip-flops is the green wire that you see here. Notice that the Q naught output wraps all the way back around in each case to the D input of the flip-flop. By doing that, you've created a divide by two circuit. We've done the same thing with the second flip-flop here. And the way that we have a counter, an asynchronous counter in this case, is that we have the external clock coming into the first clock's input. And then every flip-flop after that, even if I had eight of these things strung together, each clock would come from the previous output of the previous flip-flop. In this case, Q0 ties into the clock. Now, don't worry about whether it's Q or Q0. We'll get into that later on. Now, if you can do a divide by two circuit here by wrapping Q0 right back around a D, then you can do the same thing with JK flip-flops. So a JK flip-flop, the way that we create a divide by two, if you refer back to quite a few videos ago now, the way that we do that is we tie J and K both high. When they're both high, that's in toggle mode. That means J, that means the Q output is going to continually just flip back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay. Toggle mode again happens when J and K are both tied high. So in this case, five volts. This one is tied to five volts. This is the divide by two. This is another divide by two. And I've chained them together in kind of the same way. I have a clock going into the first input. That's the external clock. And then afterward, this clock gets its signal from the output of the previous flip-flop. In this case, it's Q. Again, don't worry about why I chose Q instead of Q0. That's not important at the moment, okay? Just to give you an idea or show them, show you that they work in motion, you see here that I have the two circuits that I just showed you pictures of actually running side by side. So same idea. Both of those are just series of two divide by two circuits, J and K tied high on the right hand side, or Q not wrapped around D on the left hand side. But the both count up, we have four states, zero, one, two, and three that can be output. And um, those are asynchronous counters. So that's your next lesson. Hopefully that makes sense. In the next video, I'm going to start to talk about the difference between counting up versus counting down.